capitis uh, and ultimately arthritis it's disorders and ultimately how we will manage the patient with the rehabilitation with the help of rehabilitation so uh, these are the contents uh, first i will introduce what is the arthritis then uh, the two major types of the arthritis or the forms of, of arthritis Uh, rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis we will uh, discuss these two types of arthritis uh, what are they and what are their causes what is the uh, i mean etiology uh, differential diagnosis signs and symptoms related to all uh, you know all related uh, problems or the uh, aspects of these uh, two types exercise consideration uh, what type of patient we will consider for the exercise and which conditions we uh, will consider for the exercise and we have the data management then actual what will uh, what we will do for the management and the lastly exercise therapy okay so the arthritis arthritis is the inflammation of one or the more joints simply the literal mean of the arthritis is the inflammation of a joint either it could be a one or it could be a more than one um, or it could be a multiple okay so next the classification classification is a very broad uh, or the arthritic classification is very uh, uh, is very versatile i have seen many uh, type of uh, you know uh, classification on the behalf of the joint involvement like you can say the polyarthritis monoarthritis oligoarthritis means the number of means on the behalf of or on the basis of the number of the joints involvement as well as the reactive arthritis arthritis associated with the psoriasis or the you can say psoriatic arthritis arthritis polyarthritis juvenile arthritis or the gout or itself it's called the gout arthritis in which the uric acid increase and some kidney issues uh, has been shown so there are multiple types of or you can say that there are major 10 class there are 10 classifications of the arthritis but the major three ones are the most common three one are the inflammatory arthritis infectious arthritis and metabolic arthritis on the behalf or on the basis of their causes inflammatory arthritis due to the inflammation obviously as name shows and the infectious arthritis due to any kind of infectious and metabolic due to the any metabolic disease the arthritis will be called the arthritic arthritis uh, sorry metabolic arthritis but uh, our today's domain is rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis we will discuss these two rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis in detail because these two types of arthritis are uh, the or the forms of arthritis these are not the types actually these are the forms of the arthritis which are common in our society and as well as according to the uh, demand demand of your study guide these two arthritis uh, we will discuss further in uh, some details okay so rheumatoid arthritis uh, i hope that Uh, the def definitions at least you have uh, already known uh, with these terms or uh, with these definitions you are already familiar uh, ra is a chronic inflammatory disease yes it's a it's a chronic inflammatory disease the simplest or the uh, literal definition of the osteoarthritis it's a autoimmune dis disorder means the own body cells against Uh, work against the uh, uh, of the uh, own immunity or the own cells or the own uh, defense system ra or the rheumatoid arthritis as well as uh, you know is a symmetrical uh, arthritis symmetrical arthritis means involves simultaneously two joints of the uh, uh, two joints of the similar uh, uh, body area similar body area means if the upper limb if, uh, if the upper limb is involved that means the hands of the upper limb of uh, of both will be involved in the rheumatoid arthritis that type of arthritis is known as the rheumatoid arthritis inflammation of the disease number one thing second thing is a symmetrical arthritis both sides of the joints will be involved now the third point is a autoimmune disorder we get three points from this slide rheumatoid arthritis the cause is unknown still uh, researchers are uh, doing work and uh, are trying to uh, find out the actual cause of the uh, of the uh, rheumatoid arthritis but th but right now or the till time you can say that the, in, uh, the cause or the etiology is unknown but the most common cause uh, but the most common uh, you know the age uh, uh, in which the rheumatoid arthritis uh, has been occurred or has occurred 
is the age of 31 to 40 or the 50. This is the research. I have taken this graph from the Indian research. Uh, they have uh, they uh, this answer or the result shows that 31 to 50 or uh, somewhere I have seen the uh, 45 till 45. This is the middle age where because the population has a different uh, uh, results in the different in different countries according to their lifestyle and according to uh, their diet routine and all that. So the 31 to 50, you can say the largely this age limit or this age uh, bracket has shown the greater amount of the rheumatoid arthritis or the severe uh, rheumatoid arthritis or the occurrence was very common in this age population. Rheumatoid arthritis sadly are uh, again uh, is very common in the women as compared to the men, three times greater in the women as compared to the men due to the maybe uh, the low immunity and at certain levels and some physiological changes which is different from the men. That's why you can say the women are more prone towards uh, the rheumatoid arthritis, three times more prone than the men. What is the uh, criteria in, in which we can diagnose the rheumatoid arthritis. Number one thing, differential diagnosis, you can make on purely on the clinical basis, right? Clinical basis means the on, base, on the basis of the signs and symptoms. There are many uh, arthritis that resemble with, with each other, but you uh, can, different, uh, you can diag uh, differentially diagnose by these uh, signs and symptoms. And the sign and symptoms or the criteria according to the ACR, American College of the Rheumatology, which has been given in 1987, that morning stiffness that will last an hour or more than an hour or more than 30 minutes is a typical sign of the rheumatoid arthritis. If someone or if some patient, if any patient complains to you, that uh, I have a morning stiffness when I wake up in the morning, I feel people joints and in a symmetrical manner, and that lasts more than 30 minutes or an hour, but when I used to uh, do different, uh, my, uh, my home uh, core activities, it resolves. So this is the statement which is commonly uh, used by the patient, and that is a typical uh, sign you can say that the patient might be having the rheumatoid arthritis. Arthritis is three or more joint areas. It involves the multiple joints, not a single joint, and symmetrical joints. Upper limb, uh, if there is an involvement of upper limb, so that means not in the right side, as well as on the left side of the joints will also involve. Arthritis of the hand joints, swelling joints, greater than one swelling joint, which are very common, which are very commonly observable that uh, the small joints of the hands majorly affected by rheumatoid arthritis. So again, this is the criteria that if anyone has the arthritis of the joints, that means you have suspect that the person might have the rheumatoid arthritis. Symmetric arthritis, as I told you earlier, the both limbs or the both joints of the both sides uh, or the pair joints will be involved in uh, this arthritis. A rheumatoid nodules. In the small joints, the nodules will appear. You will, uh, that nodules uh, are uh, very visible and uh, you can easily uh, see or you can easily palpate. So the rheumatoid nodules, again, a typical sign of the uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Sera RF or the uh, rheumatic factor Rheumatic factor is a protein, is the immunoglobulin, which is uh, which is uh, very commonly seen by the uh, by the uh, CBC or by the uh, uh, testing of the blood in the serum. So if RF uh, is also present, uh, it means that a rheumatic factor is also present in the serum. That means the rheumatoid arthritis is again susceptible. Okay, so radiological changes, erosions of the X-rays of the hands. So you can uh, also uh, get help from the radiological findings if you have uh, done the already done uh, the uh, X-rays or some other radiological. 
uh, see or you can easily find out that the person is having dermatitis arthritis or not. So these are the uh, typical criteria or you can say this is the approved gold standard criteria of diagnosing rheumatoid arthritis on the basis of the signs and symptoms according to the ACR which has given in 1987 American College of Rheumatology. Signs and symptoms morning stiffness, difficulty in the movement upon the wake, uh, awakening, uh, generalized stiffness, anorexia, weight loss and the fatigue these are the common signs and symptoms. Uh, patient will complain about can co complain about these uh, these problems that he is having. Systemic manifestation. Other than this, other than these typical uh, signs and symptoms and the criteria, what other problems uh, we can see uh, in the rheumatic uh, uh, patient or in the rheumatoid arthritis? Because it's a systemic disease. It's a systemic involvement disease. So system will involve. Uh, throughout the uh, uh, throughout the uh, of the uh, throughout the manifestation of the disease number one thing is the joint involvement as it's a joint disease so typically the joint will in, uh, involve and joint will be immobile due to the uh, secondary to the pain or uh, secondary to the hesitation of that if i will uh, mobile or if i will do some uh, activity that will cause my pain so due to this fear or the, due to this uh, phobia Immobility will occur and immobility will lead to the contractures, muscular contractures, muscular tightness and as well as bony changes. Inflammation definitely, arthralgia, joint pains and the crepitus. Crepitus sounds, uh, some whistling sounds will appear when uh, the patient or when you, after, uh, when, uh, uh, you will diagnose uh, with the physical You can easily hear the crepitus but in the, mid, uh, in, in the moderate to severe conditions, not in the, uh, in the early condition or you can say in the uh, acute conditions. Cervical spine, what, how the uh, cervical spine will affect C1 and C2 is the major portion that uh, will affect by the RA and which is a fetal, which is a quite uh, dangerous. If C1 and C2 involve, it might uh, turn uh, surrounding ligaments. Uh, so that's why you can say the cervical spine C2, C, uh, C1, C2 involves that is a quite dangerous uh, stage or the condition. You have to treat or you have to manage that uh, part quickly and gently with the appropriate treatment and appropriate management. Uh, of course, range of motion will be decreased due to the immobility, due to the pain, arthralgia, torn uh, of the transverse ligaments of the atlas yes atlas uh, ligament uh, the uh, transverse ligaments of the atlas there are chances of the uh, torning or the torsion of the transverse ligament of the atlas which is why i said that uh, this is the most uh, dangerous or can be a lethal so you have to be uh, careful about it and you have to uh, treat or manage accordingly ankylosing spondylitis and what is ankylosing spondylitis? It's the inflammation of the vertebra, SI joint, sacroiliac joint, spinal facet, posto-vertebral joint. These all joints will uh, initially inflame. And then after uh, that, after inflammation state, ankylosing means uh, they fuse together. The bones will fuse together. And which is, again, the second stage of the arthritis, which is harmful, which is vigorous, which is severe. That means the patient now is uh, totally unable or completely unable to perform any physical activity and due to that secondary complication will overcome uh, like uh, the muscular uh, contractures, muscle weakness um, uh, as well as the loss of the function. Temporomandibular joint is also involved in this uh, uh, complain you that I am unable or unable to uh, open the mouth or I'm not able to complete opening of uh, complete opening in that means the normal opening of the mouth. Abnormal approximation of the upper and the lower teeth. Obviously, if the TMJ is not proper or you can say is not at the place, uh, is not on the uh, on the normal uh, axis and plane, that means the approximation of the teeth uh, may be not normal. So this kind of again the uh, complaint you can get from the patient shoulder. Glenohumeral, all the shoulder complex, all the joints of the glenohumeral acromioclavicular, uh, acromioclavicular joint or the, uh, or the uh, 
in your glenohumeral joint these all will involve uh, in the uh, in the rheumatoid arthritis these all will be come uh, uh, will be go into the degenerative changes and patient might uh, complain that i am unable to move or do activity that uh, allow these joint so degeneration is very common pain loss of the range of motion tendonitis surrounding tendons may get inflammation elbow inflammation is very common again joint surface erosion uh, instability flexion bone fracture obviously if the person will not move their body part or the elbow simply the flexion contractures or the uh, antagonist or the flexor uh, surface of the muscles will get contracted systemic manifestations uh, other than that wrist wrist will involve and the greatly wrist and uh, uh, feet involve wrist uh, flexion contracture subluxation of the wrist and decurium diseases or the disease flexion contracture is very common again due to the inability to move or due to the you can say uh, uh, due to the uh, because surrounding ligaments may be uh, get affected due to this so that's why the subluxation of the ulna and the subluxation of the radius is very common uh, in the ra patient will complain you that uh, the angle of joint has been changed or the uh, the bone or the uh, you know joint is most prominent now so you can uh, that will be easily visible or the patient will complain you so the last one uh, that uh, disease or the deformity we find uh, or we found in the wrist is the decurion disease what is the decurion disease is the irritation of the tendon sheath the inflammation of the tendon sheath right at the thumb level at the thumb level this sheath or the ten, uh, the uh, superficial sheath of the uh, carpal bone get inflamed inflamed that is why it is called the decurion syndrome or as well as it is very common in the uh, in today's uh, texting disorders or you can say the persons who are uh, uh, continuously uh, texting or typing the messages or in a greater uh, in greater uh, time or you can say giving the more time on the texting so they are also getting this problem and in joints metacarpophalangeal drift deformity swine neck deformity and botanian uh, botanial uh, deformity these are the very common in the hand i'll explain you what are these uh, deformities which are uh, occurring in the hand but first uh, just uh, listen the terms or just uh, memorize these terms that in hand Uh, metacarpophalangeal drift deformity is occurring swine neck is uh, having uh, and uh, as well as the botanial deformity is having in the hip trochanteric bursitis bursa will inflamed trochanteric bursa will get inflammation femoral head and acetabulum inflammation less commonly involved in the ra so just keep in mind that inflammation of the bursa inflammation of the joint and uh, as well as the contractures flexion contractures are common these are the uh, you know uh, you can if you make the list of these problems so these uh, problems are very common um, other than just few or uh, j- just like the hand joint uh, in in this area or in this part the deformities are different otherwise the uh, in the whole uh, systems or in the whole body at the uh, at every joint the problems are very common like the bursitis tendonitis uh, inflammation uh, function loss of, loss of function uh complexion contractures these types of problems are very common so if you make the list so you can uh, easily uh, uh uh write the umbrella of any joint so knees a uh, painful knees again severely involved flex deformity flexion deformity uh, ankle feet uh, calcaneus spur is very common the spur or the extra growth of the bone will occur at the uh, calcaneus metatarsalgia met, uh, the pain in the metatarsals helix valgus the lateral movement of the uh, uh, of the big toe of the foot hammer toes i'll show you what are these so i have told you earlier that hand joints in which the metacarpophalangeal drift deformity will occur swine neck deformity will occur and botanial deformity will occur so what are these these are the ulnar deviation or you can say the metacarpophalangeal drift in which what is happening metacarpophalangeal joints is Uh, is shifting is changing is diverting from uh, the normal position 
so this is the common ulnar deviation or as well as you can say the metacarpophalangeal drift so this picture i uh, hope so is clear for everyone that what is the metacarpophalangeal drift or you can say this is the deformity of uh, hand in the rheumatoid arthritis so bilateral bilateral uh, involvement uh, okay. so uh, there is a bilateral involvement both hands are involved now the second hand deformity is this swan neck deformity swan neck deformity what is the swan neck deformity this is the swan neck deformity this is the swan neck deformity in which the dip joints bands or get into the flexion or the pip joint will uh, go into the hyperextension so this is the abnormal uh, kind of uh, shape or you can say uh, the structure will made so this is the swan neck deformity and patient might uh, uh, do complain or you can uh, easily see the deformity as well and the third one or the third hand uh, deformity is the bottenier deformity what is the bottenier deformity is uh, similar to the swan neck but the difference is pip joint will go into the flexion and dip into the hyperextension right the pip joint will go into the flexion dip joint will go into the hyper this is the dip joint will go into the hyper hyper extension and the flexion so this is again the abnormal condition this is again the abnormal shape ab abnormal alignment of the joint or the structure so that's why it cause a lot of pain inflammation loss of function and obviously cosmetically it's not uh, acceptable that our uh, joints or the fingers uh, go in uh, in these type of uh, shapes so these are the hand deformities otherwise the basic terms were clear to all of you the feet deformity hallus valgus and the hammer toes these are the deformities which are common uh, in the uh, in the feet uh, in the rheumatic uh, patients so or in the arthritic patients this is the hallus valgus in which the uh, big toe will go or will shift or will move towards the lateral side so this type of appearance will show and the hammer toe in which your small toes will go like a hammer shape will uh, you know uh, shift or change towards the uh, hammer toe shape so this is the hammer toe which is common again uh, joint uh, in the joint diseases or especially in the rheumat uh, rheumatoid arthritis or the ra so hope so these deformities are clear to you that what kind of appearance it is and what uh, what basically joints are involved in these deformities okay other than that muscles and tendons will also get affected muscular atrophy uh, is very common and has been uh, seen in every patient almost muscle weakness obviously due to the unknown mechanism there is no such any uh, uh, mechanism has been uh, find out or you can say uh, is uh, is obvious or is not present in the theoretical literature that what are the causes behind the muscle involvement muscular atrophy and muscular weakness uh, related to the tenosynovitis or the tendon inflammation is again the common and the cause or the mechanism is unknown that how and what are what the physiological what the pathological what the pathophysiological changes Uh, is occurring in the body, and due to that, the muscle and tendon uh, is going to inflame. Uh, inflame. So the mechanism is still unknown, but these are the problems that again reported among the uh, uh, RA uh, patients. And this is a chart uh, uh, for those who are uh, who wanted to uh, study more because it's a systemic involvement inside. Uh, systemic systemic involvement in means uh, means that. means that internal viscera internal body organs how they are getting affected internal systems are physiological system how they are getting affected this is the extra chart but i uh, found it useful so i uh, that's why i placed i put in my presentation if you want to uh, study after that after my class you can easily study the some uh, musculoskeletal problems are common and which are also given Uh, otherwise other than that the, like the pleural effusion lymphatic nodes or the lymph uh, adenopathies amyloidosis so these are the again 
you can learn by your own because it's not the part of uh, the of my uh, literature laboratory test what kind of laboratory test you can uh, uh, perform for the help uh, for the help uh, in the uh, in the diagnosis elevated esr when you perform the, uh, uh, when you check the esr rate so it would be elevated crp would be elevated cbc shows anemia synovial fluid analysis synovial fluid more will be more viscous in the normal condition uh, it's not uh, as viscous as in the uh, ra so the viscosity uh, will increase as well as the crystal will be present uh, in the ra radiographic changes show will show the helmark difference like the alignment as you can see the alignment alignment is changed so the bone uh, density and surface bone may be uh, show you thicker and the more denser the cartilaginous space or the spacing between the joints or the cartilaginous spacing will uh, might show you uh, uh, decrease or that space get get decreased so these are the radiographic findings that you uh, have to check in uh, in your film x ray before diagnosing anyone with the ra classification of the progression of the rheumatoid arthritis so uh, classification of the progression of the rheumatoid arthritis how uh, this uh, this uh, we can say that this is the early stage this is the moderate severe or, or terminal or you can say from the least to the greatest or from the uh, lightest to the uh, vigorous or from the bottom to the top so early early stage patient might uh, will come to you at the early stage no destruction uh, uh, destructive changes or the meta okay so no uh, destructive changes will uh, uh, will be seen in the early patient and radiographic evidence no ev uh, radiographic evidence will be seen but you can uh, only diagnose on the behalf of the uh, cbc and some serological test as well as uh, the uh, patient's complaint and physical examination moderate now the radiographic evidences also uh, will shown to you some changes as well as some other deformities and from the moderate to the severe again the deformities or all the uh, uh, you can say the criteria will go even worse the diagnostic criteria will go even worse and obvious and the terminal stage the all the criteria will meet and the fibrous or the heart tissue will uh, found uh, at the end so these are the uh, basic uh, uh, progression classification that how it progresses and how a patient will come to you uh, and how you have to find out the problem on the uh, either on the uh, on the radiographic changes either on the on the other test but it's not mandatory that uh, you have uh, uh, found all the symptoms at a time or you can say the typical uh, uh, patient will found uh, you uh, you found a typical patient like uh, every problem is in uh, is uh, present in it, in it or you can say that he is complaining every uh, everything related to the rheumatoid arthritis so early stage moderate severe and terminal stages are different you have to focus on these as well before diagnosing and before managing the problem how does it feel stiff joint that feel worse in the morning of Uh, obviously, and that uh, uh, that stiffness lasts more than 30 minutes or one hour, and after uh, doing some ADLs, that uh, uh, will ease, and patient will come uh, will say that uh, after uh, some physical activity, I used to get uh, less pain and more physical activity. Pain and swelling in the joint, obviously, bouts of the fatigue, fever, loss of the fun, uh, joint functions, redness, warmth, and the tenderness in the joint areas. These are again uh, this side uh, or disease complaints or the problems or the signs and symptoms again repeating. So I'm just going forward. So uh, the next is the osteoarthritis. Rheumatoid uh, arthritis is ended here. Now the second form of the uh, of the arthritis is the osteoarthritis again, which is the very common. osteoarthritis is a non inflammatory but a degenerative uh, arthritis it's a non inflammatory but degenerative arthritis mainly based on the age age factor uh, and the lifestyle factor or as well as the trauma or the injury of the joint 
every person or uh, in a uh, one in a four may develop hip OA in their lifetime until uh, the age 50 women and uh, women and men are affected equally after the age 50 uh, the female or the uh, the women are more prone to get osteoarthritis than the men okay so these are Osteoarthritis, the major factor that contributing in the in the cause of the osteoarthritis or that can boost the uh, uh, osteoarthritis, the age, first of all is the age, the genetic factors, some genetic factors, some genes, some, uh, like the HLA is involved in the production or in the creation or in the causing of the osteoarthritis. Post injury or the trauma again is a uh, is a common cause of the osteoarthritis, or you can say the factor or the risk factor that involves in the osteoarthritis. Occupation, the persons or the patient, uh, the occupation in which the pa uh, person uh, doing long standing or long sitting uh, or a particular posture, adapt, uh, adapting a particular posture in a for a long period of time. So it is commonly seen in those patients or the persons that. Uh, certain uh, occupation is also causing the osteoarthritis. Sports, again, sports uh, is responsible for the uh, demineralization at certain stage, at certain level. So again, sports is cause, uh, also causing the osteoarthritis, especially in the females. Uh, it is also included in the female athlete trial. Hope so you do, you, uh, do know that what is the female athlete trial. Obesity, obesity is again after the age, the largest factor or the biggest factor that causing the osteoarthritis. So these are the factors and these are the as well as the causes of the osteoarthritis. The best way to prevent the slow, uh, prevent or the slow, uh, the onset of the OA is to choose the healthy lifestyle, avoid the obesity and particularly in the regular exercises. These are the preventions. Preventions are always better than cure. So uh, guide your patient or uh, your uh, locality that the better lifestyle or the healthy lifestyle uh, with the uh, healthy lifestyle, you can avoid or you can um, you can uh, prevent the osteoarthritis. Criteria, uh, according to the Calgren and the Lawrence, there is a criteria of diagnosing of the OA. No radiological finding, doubtful. Uh, this is the criteria, and as well as again, uh, this is the progressing stage. How it is going to worsen how it is going to increase or how it is going to uh, change uh, showing the changes so no radiographical findings in the zero grade or in the zero stage doubtful narrowing in the one and the definite osteophytes in the two moderate multiple osteophytes in the three and the large osteophytes marked in the grade four so this is the grading from again simplest to the uh, most complex one so patient may be uh, come to you at any stage and you have to uh, manage or treat the patient accordingly and uh, send for the and as well as send for the uh, uh, for the tests and measures and stiffness less than 30 minutes and the RA that was more than 30 minutes and as well as uh, for an R but joint stiffness less than 30 minutes repetitive Bony enlargement, bony tenderness, no palpable wound. These are the typical uh, clinical classification or criteria or the sign and symptoms. On the behalf of that, uh, you can uh, check, you can find out, you can examine, or you can uh, ultimately label the patient as a OA. OA, how does it feel? Stiffness in the joint, stiffness in the joint, uh, sitting, lying down in the long periods of the time, pain during the active that is achieved by the rest, cracking, crunching, or other type of the joint noise, obviously, because it's a degenerative disease, uh, degeneration or destruction of the cartilage, and ultimately then joint, and which causing the cracking or the crunching sounds, which produce, which uh, cause to produce the cracking or crunching sounds. So pain when you press on the joint, when you palpate the joint, when you press the joint, it's a typical sign that patient will uh, uh, showing you a jumping sign, or a patient will uh, tell you that I'm uh, that I'm feeling a severe pain. Increased bone growth around the joint that you may be able able uh, to feel. 
or you can see through the radiograph increased bone growth bones will uh, get destruction uh, go into the destruction as well as the abnormal bony growth like the spurs or the uh, or the spikes of the bones so these kind of uh, you know changes will show in the rheumatoid arthritis so uh, the, uh, now the exercise consideration what uh, kind of patients you will get into the consideration for the exercise not every person uh, is uh, have a needed uh, exercise because of their severe uh, symptoms or you can say the severe conditions because in both uh, ra or in oa at the end stages patient get uh, very much fragile uh, bones so um, for uh, 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 so for exercise you can break or you can fracture the bones that's why what kind of uh, patients you can consider for the exercise if you have a no damage in the weight bearing joints like in the large joints and the knee joints or in the uh, hip joints so in the large if you have no any damage any wear and tear, tear or you can say that the mild level of the wear and tear is occurred in these conditions you can easily refer your patient for the exercise or the physical therapy or the exercise therapy no reason uh, you couldn't participate in the high intensity exercise such as the aerobics and the jogging you can easily recommend patients or you can fearlessly recommend patients to the aerobics and for the jogging uh, if, the, if there is a uh, bearable uh, uh, weight loss or you can say bearable joint damage is having if you have damage uh, in the lower extremities then no jogging jogging or the hard aerobic uh, aerobics obviously it uh, will give you the uh, idea that when you will uh, send to patients uh, for the exercise and when not if the joints are highly affected if the joints are more or the bones are more fragile so or easily get fatigued so that means these are the signs or these are the typical uh, conditions in which you will not prefer to send uh, any person for the exercise if it's the upper extremity exercise that involve these joints such as the boxing and having uh, or the heavy weight lifting heavy weight lifting so these type of exercises again contra indicated in those patients who are who are having the upper extremity joints involvement again listen to your joints what they are saying if they are healthy so or or healthy or less uh, disease so you can easily refer to exercise for the uh, to prevent the secondary complications like the muscular contractures like flexion contractures like uh, muscle Uh, strength endurance to gain the muscle strength endurance power to uh, to regain or to maintain all the uh, components of the healthy muscle and bone you have to listen your joints and then uh, refer to the exercise rehabilitative management arthritis is the chronic progressive disease okay r is a systemic disease rehabilitative management so rehabilitation of the individual with the arthritis requires intense and coordinated effort of the variety of the health professionals including the physical therapist of course as i told you that rehabilitation is a multidisciplinary approach there are multiple or there are number of uh, uh, field experts involved in this uh, uh, in this rehabilitative management and every person has their own domain uh, and in in their own domain they will work with the patient and and just like the physical therapist physical therapy examination how will examine physically uh, to patient like history take the history brief history medical history uh, personal history professional history someone's mic is left open someone's mic is left open can you please off the mic okay thank you so physical therapy examination first take the brief history uh, of the uh, of, of like uh, medical history personal history professional history genetic history uh, as well as uh, pain location duration intensity obviously uh, as well as according to the uh, examination inflammation heat arrhythmia swelling morning stiffness uh, previous level of the activity and the degree of the fatigue of okay. so these are the uh, these are the common or the typical uh, physical examination that uh, we have to do before uh, prescribing the exercise or before uh, diagnosing the or any uh, rheumatological disease range of motion we have to check 
after that degree of the fatigue the range of the motion again is limited range of motion in both arthritis so we have to check the range of motion muscular strength by uh, by applying some resistance on the patient's uh, uh, on the patient's body area uh, where we have to uh, check the strength so by applying some resistance we can easily uh, recognize the muscle strength joint stability as the joint is stable or not which is uh, which also uh, tells you the health of the ligaments either the ligaments are involved or not either the tendons are involved or not so the uh, joint stability to check uh, joint stability is important to check endurance muscular endurance uh, how much patient uh, is uh, able to doing the repeated uh, repeated exercises or repeated physical activity without getting fatigue this is called the endurance so uh, we have to check the muscular endurance of the patient physical uh, functional examination what kind of uh, functions or the physical activity person is able to do and what kind of uh, not mobility and the gait obviously uh, how much patient is mobile there are uh, multiple types of the mobility in bed mobility out bed mobility uh, uh, out room mobility so what kind of uh, mobility a patient has or the patient can easily perform the gait pattern because of the large joints or the uh, or the lower limb involvement the gait pattern or the walking pattern of the patient Uh, has changed so that's why we have to analyze the gait as well because physical therapists work on all of these uh, of parameters sensory integrity you have to check because uh, systemic involvement is in the rheumatoid arthritis so neurological seen in those patients so that's why it's mandatory to see the sensory integrity either sensation is normal or not for that we have the multiple uh, methods to check the sensory integrity Uh, like the two point discrimination like uh, uh, needle and pin uh, pricking so these are the this uh, is used for the and to check the sensory integration psychological status uh, psychological status obviously patient might uh, be in uh, anxiety mood swing problem so you have to check the psychological status or the state of mind as well by just uh, having the conversation with him or her or by just uh, having some talk physical therapy intervention uh, what kind of uh, 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 intervention or you can say the treatment physical therapist uh, will uh, perform so intervention will be uh, decrease the pain the first inter intervention or the aim of the physical therapist or any rehabilitative uh, persons or rehabilitative therapist is to decrease the pain now for the decreasing of pain we have many things like we have the uh, uh, cold packs hot packs and as well as some analgesics and uh, we have many literatures and many researches that show the uh, shows uh, that uh, the uh, Effects for the joints and for the body, as simply. So uh, the main is to decrease the pain, increase and maintain the range of motion by passive movement or by active movement. Passive movement uh, is the movement that performed by the therapist or uh, performed by any uh, other or external body force uh, other than patient itself. And what is the active range of motion? Active range of motion is the uh, movement performed by itself patient. so increase or maintain the range of motion of all joints either by the active or by the passive range of motion if the patient is able or the uh, stage is initial so you so you can uh, ask the patients to perform active range of motion if not then perform the passive range of motion means by physical therapist or by any other person or by you simply so increase or maintain the muscle strength muscle strength how we will maintain the muscle strength by the resistive exercises by performing some uh, stretching exercises resisted exercises simply we give the patients to some weight and will ask uh, him or her to lift that weight or carry that weight weight so that's why or uh, by this strategy we can uh, simply uh, increase or maintain the muscle strength increase the joint stability and decrease the biomechanical stress uh, stress how we can increase the joint stability for that we can uh, get help from the ortho uh, orthotics or uh, prosthesis pno that is called in the short form pno pno or the processes or orthotics they made uh, they made some uh, 
uh, some modalities or some external body parts that uh, useful for getting help like braces or like some other jackets they are helpful in uh, in providing the stability or the support and the uh, bio and reducing uh, biomechanical strength or the stress someone is texting okay uh there are some questions there are a few questions but i'll uh, give you answer at the end so once that finish this uh, lecture then i'll answer you all improve the gait pattern uh, promote the mobility and uh, increase the endurance endurance means by repeat, uh, repetitive exercises or repeatedly exercises same type of exercises you perform uh, with greater repetition 10 times or uh, 20 times those uh, those students or those uh, persons who used to go to uh, gym they know what uh, i am talking about the endurance so same type of exercise if you uh, repeatedly perform uh, that will improve your endurance promote the mobility improve the gait pattern mobility by uh, by giving some aid if the patient is unable to walk independently due to the uh, contractures or due to the less strength uh if he is not able to maintain the base of support or uh, the strength is not enough to uh, achieve any uh, physical activity or any target activity so you have uh, some options of giving the mobility aid like the canes crutches and the walkers these are the mod mo uh, modalities or these are the supporting aids supporting tools that we give to the patient to promote the mobility and to support in the uh, mobility improve the gait pattern again uh, when you give the uh, the aid it ultimately uh, the patient will mobile and increase uh, and improve the gait pattern as well improve a journal health by fitness uh, the those patients who are in the early stage of the arthritis changes you uh, you must have to guide them that uh, they can do light exercises like the jogging walking aerobic some gym activities some uh, uh, treadmill walk and these kind of activities some aerobics uh, that improve not in the fitness uh, not uh, the physical health as well uh, uh, also uh, the cardiac endurance or the cardiac uh, fitness or the cardiac health as well so cardiac health is equally important like the physical health as this is very common thing but i have mentioned here so uh, improve the journal health by uh, by modifying their uh, lifestyle Uh, the uh, adapting the healthy lifestyle modifying their lifestyle if the uh, lifestyle is not healthy and by doing exercise so you can uh, get fitness as well uh, uh, physical fitness as well as the cardiac fitness so uh, teach self management how to uh, uh, shift yourself from one position to another position how to change uh, the uh, exercise from the lighter to the vigorous and uh, how to counsel the patient basically is the management as well as the counseling part is uh, also included in the man management or the self management so you have to teach or you have to counsel the patient that this is not the uh, you know thing that cannot be resolved also these kind of uh, supporting or the helping words or the sentences uh, sentences uh, can help you uh, help the patient to uh, recover early or recover soon so modalities for the pain relief as i told you earlier in uh, in the previous slides that heat and cold produces a localized analgesia so we uh, give the patients recommend patients to the heat and cold but there is a difference uh, that when we will uh, give the heat and when we will we'll, we will uh, uh, prefer to give the hot bath because in the in the uh, later stages in the chronic stages when there is an inflammation is huge where, where the uh, uh, the redness or the uh, the cardinal signs of the inflammation is on the peak you cannot uh, apply the hot packs because uh, because it may be uh, aggravate or increase the symptoms or the pain or simply the discomfort of the patient so in in that stage of the inflammation or inflammation and the inflammation signs uh, the cardinal feature signs of the inflammation are are acute so you will uh, prefer to go towards the cold pack rather than the hot pack and similarly after the hot hot pack and cold pack we have the tens transcutaneous electric uh, stimulation 
Sense is a machine which is uh, work on the gate pain theory that is also uh, a reliable source or you can say also uh, uh, helpful in managing or decreasing the pain. Moist hot pack and dry hot pack lamps. Uh, lamps. There are multiple lamps, infrared lamps uh, that are now omitted, but it was uh, because uh, I included because it was included in your uh, literature. So that's why I added on. But in practically, we do not use uh, lamps nowadays. These are basically the uh, red light lamps or the infrared lamps, which helpful again for the managing the pain. But that was the previous theory or the previous concept. Now we do not use because uh, the uh, latest research shows that there is no uh, impact of these lamps or the lights on the pain or the circulation or or, or improving uh, improving the symptoms, right? So paraffin and hydrotherapy. Paraffin is a wax. Paraffin wax we you, we can use uh, for the uh, for the improvement of the blood circulation. As you know that uh, the blood circulation will increase the uh, that inflama uh, inflammation and other symptom will reduce. Uh, cells. Hydrotherapy. Hydrotherapy is a water therapy. Uh, those patients who are very fragile, very weak, who cannot perform the exercises on the land or on the uh, on the ground, they can perform exercises under the uh, water because, as we know, that uh, under the water uh, we uh, have less weight uh, than the um, uh, land. Almost uh, uh, 50. 40, 40 to 50 percent uh, weight reduces under the water, so that's why in, uh, under the water you can easily you have chances and you have the more capacity to perform different type of exercises, uh, uh, exercises of those patients who are uh, critically ill, terminally ill, or you can say are in the uh, age in the advanced age. So the tense is again orthosis provide the local rest as well as uh, maintain your alignment. Give cosmetic effect. So, orthosis is also uh, we can use joint mobility, teach proper positioning, how we can improve the joint mobility. As I told you earlier, that teach the positioning, how you have to sit, how you have to uh, get off from the chair, how you have to move from the bed to the chair and from the, uh, from the chair to the uh, washroom. The, uh, make sure that railing are uh, present everywhere in the washroom, some uh, washroom and in the room. Some modifications; these uh, are the common modifications that uh, we uh, that made uh, in these patients or in these kind of patients because due to the uh, uh, poor control or the loss of the function, patient might uh, uh, have the chances of fall and get fractured. So that's why the proper positioning, proper modification in the rooms or in the uh, washrooms or in the area where they are living is very mandatory or very essential. Follow the neurophysiological uh, principles or the stretching and uh, stretching. Stretching also improve your mobility like the lengthening and the shortening of muscle. Uh, if you perform the opposite function of any muscle like uh, uh, I'm uh, stretching the flexors into the extension stage, so it will stretch and uh, stretch out. And that stretching will trigger uh, to boost the GTOs, Golgi tendon organs, and some physiological reactions and processes will occur. Hope so you have uh, uh, the idea and you have the knowledge, background knowledge of the physiology. So uh, by uh, stretching, and some physiological reactions will occur, and uh, due to that, mobility will increase. So this is the common uh, exercise or the common type of exercise that pro uh, physical therapists perform. To increase the joint mobility, manual therapy. There, there is a. Uh, this is the umbrella term. Manual therapy is a, a huge uh, field itself. I can say, or I must say, because manual therapy, uh, there are procedures, methods, and types of the manual therapy that we perform to improve the mobility. And there are a number of scientists, researchers have introduced uh, their own techniques by their name by their name. Uh, so manual therapy uh, is a therapy that perform. I'm giving you the, li the, uh, the little introduction that uh, manual therapy is the therapy that we perform uh, the uh, mean of manual by applying different kind of pressures, by applying the different kind of pressures and the <coughs> as well as uh, stretching of joint. So the strengthening, strengthening we can perform by uh, what is happening there? Oh, 
Okay, I'll give you the answers at the end. Just keep asking the questions. Whatever is coming in your mind, just write it down in the uh, inbox. I'll uh, answer you at the end of the uh, lecture, right? Okay, so it's trending. Start with the isometric exercises, improve the muscle tone. Um, okay, uh, strengthening means we are improving the muscle strength, muscular strength, muscular power kind of uh, kind of power. So uh, uh, for that, we have to perform the resisted exercises. Resisted exercises means uh, you should give the load to the patient and then ask the patient to perform the opposite function of that load. Like for example, I'm performing the flexion of the therapist or the next person will resist my arm or my hand to lifting up my arm towards the flex, uh, flexion or towards my body. So this is a kind of uh, flex, uh, uh, kind of re uh, resisted exercise or the resisted activity that we give to the patients or perform to the patients uh, for gaining the strength. But uh, always, always keep in your mind that start with the lightest exercise, with the lightest activity or the lightest uh, a rehabilitative program because it might cause uh, the uh, worst effect if you suddenly perform uh, suddenly give or um, uh, prescribe the heavy amount of exercises so start with the isometric exercises what are the isometric exercises these are the very light exercises in which the iso means the same and the metric means the length in which the muscular length will remain same no length will be changed these are the exercises in which the muscle length will remain same, but the physical activity, or you can say the uh, resisted activity will occur or will perform. This is a typical example of the isometric exercises. This is the quad uh, isometric exercise in which under the quad, I have placed this roll of the uh, towel and I have asked the patient to press this uh, roll downward. This is the isometric exercise in which patient uh, is comfortable as well and as well as uh, the length of the uh, of the muscle is remains same so this is the lightest mode of exercise always start with this if the if the patient uh, but it's depend on you as well that if you see uh, uh, if you can uh, uh, give the patient uh, or you can see that patient is able to perform some rigorous exercise so you can also start from that otherwise uh, my recommendation is always start from the uh, isometric exercises or the low exercises because uh, arthritic changes some arthritis are very uh, 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 dangerous or you can say the systemic involvement in it so might you get a, a, a worst signs or the worst uh, outcomes of that so that's why always start with the isometric uh, exercises isometric exercise improve the tone static uh, endurance and the strength, static endurance, not the dynamic endurance, because we are uh, not moving the body into the whole range of motion. So it will improve the static endurance. And in the later stages, and after a long time, it will improve the strength as well. Dynamic exercises, dynamic exercises like this, you have to give the patient any task or any activity, just like if the, stat, uh, if the isometric exercises uh, uh, patient can easily perform isometric exercise and give uh, some complex exercise like uh, move against the gravity because uh, gravity is pulling uh, us downward, pulling the body part or the body downward. And we are when we assign the task that uh, will uh, against the gravity. So in this manner, uh, uh, the body part will generate the force or enough force to oppose the gravity. So this is the dynamic exercise, or you can say a little bit uh, vigorous exercise, or a little bit secondary stage or level of exercise that patient uh, that you will assign to the patient or you will ask to the patient to perform. So dynamic exercises, there are a list of dynamic exercises. There are uh, numbers of dynamic exercises that we can perform or we can prescribe. Uh, these are some examples that I have shown here that I have uh, you given here that from the line from line uh, uh, again secondary into the uh, modification in the line position then sitting and sitting to the standing so we are going from the lighter to the heaviest one so the resistive lastly the strength will improve by the uh, resistive exercise of physiological overload when we give any uh, 
resistant to the muscle that is called the physiological overload and in that response uh, muscle uh, uh, generate the extra amount of uh, strength or energy and will uh, and get trained by that exercise and uh, ultimately whenever it perform whenever he or she perform that exercise or that activity he will be used to or he will be easily perform that exercise so this is the strengthening uh, strategy this is the these are the strategies to improve the strengthening endurance training endurance training cardiovascular fitness individual uh, with the ra or the oa may be compromised cardiovascular fitness may be compromised or have seen that it uh, compromised in the uh, in the in the patients or in the individuals with the ra and oa so <coughs> sorry so uh, uh, this is very important point that we have to improve the cardiovascular fitness by the aerobic exercises and by some by some uh, prescribing some cycling activities and some um, treadmill activities walking jogging deep breathing exercises right by all these uh, strategies we can improve the cardiovascular fitness non weight bearing exercises such as the uh, cycle ergometry and the aquatic program may be used aquatic program, program as i already told you that aquatic program is the program that we perform under the water because uh, some patients cannot perform uh, uh, exercise on the land or on the ground so that's why uh, because they are even unable to bear it own body weight has or her own body weight so that's why uh, this is the suggestion or this is uh, aquatic ex programs or aquatic exercises suggested to perform uh, for those patients so these are the endurance activity or simply you can give a light weight to a patient and ask to perform uh, the 10 repetition maximum means the every movement uh, should be done uh, for the 10 uh, repetitions or 10 times and then move towards other so this is the simply the endurance training because endurance power and these muscular components um, muscular characteristics are uh, compromised in the uh, in the arthritis now the summary teach proper posture and the body mechanics for the commonly daily activities to relieve the pain and improve the function yes this is the uh, this is the uh, this is the point Uh, which should be uh, keep in mind by the rehabilitation team or rehabilitative team that teach the proper posture and body mechanics how patient will uh, uh, will stand how patient will sit how patient will move this is very important because body mechanics will get changed by the uh, bony deformities or bony changes and patient always uh, uh, you know uh, try to be in a comfort zone he or she doesn't know about the biomechanics right biomechanics or the right posture uh, posture and the importance or even the importance of it so that's why a patient always try to or the person or the individual always try to be in a comfort zone uh, uh, regardless what will uh, uh, be uh, what will happen in the future or you can say uh, the what deformity he is developing or she is developing so always try to teach the proper posture and the body mechanics if the external support is needed so uh, go for it and uh, prescribe the prosthetic prosthetics and orthoses or some slings or splints which are uh, comes under the umbrella of the prosthetic and orthotic so go for that and teach uh, the patient and uh, ask them to as well as uh, uh, follow your command show you uh, how to properly use assistive devices such as the walker and cane if you have pres prescribed and uh, if you have given the walker and cane so teach the patient how to use that because uh, initially patient uh, uh, has no idea how to use it how to uh, walk with it uh, so uh, always try to teach uh, the patient recommend different treatment options such as the braces and the splints to support the joint shoe insert uh, to relieve the stress on the lower extremities yes and the hot and cold packs this is an important point or this is the very uh, common point or you can say the easiest point that insert the soft uh, shoes or the soft uh, any soft thing in the uh, shoes to relieve the stresses on the lower extremities or from the uh, feet, uh, feet or as well as from the toes or the metacarpal uh, metatarsal or the metatarsal phalangeal joints uh, calcaneum 
so all these uh, 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 modifications will help uh, patient to ease or to relieve the stress from those areas therapy uh, to sorry therapy to ease joint pain and stiffness obviously like the stretching strengthening endurance these are the types of exercises that ultimately uh, will give the joint uh, joint ease and less stiffness suggest the modification to your environment such as the ergonomic chair or a cushion uh, mat in your kitchen to relieve the pain on, uh, and improve the function uh, so if if there is needed or if the patient is worth and patient is affordable uh, because social economic status matters a lot so if it is important and if you suggest and if you think that it is important so suggest the patients or uh, uh, prescribe to the patient such kind of modification in the in the living environment wherever he or she is living in the room or uh, the house uh, what uh, kind of possible uh, modification he or she can make so simply ask them to make these uh, changes or modification so ultimately your uh, progression will uh, will be in a greater extent and the patient will improve these are the references i will uh, send you the book as dr sarda has already sent the uh, delisa's physical medicine and rehabilitation but the major portion of the lecture was uh, made by the ossilavan i'll uh, i'll search and uh, if i uh, get the soft copy of the ossilavan so i'll definitely share with you in the class so these are my references and th this is all about the arthritis and its management rehabilitation management now this is the time of questions okay uh, ravina kumari is asking about uh, the metacarpophalangeal joint drift see metacarpophalangeal joint drift what is the metacarpophalangeal joint this uh, drift it is very visible to you it is very obvious to you that in which the alignment of the metacarpophalangeal joint is totally changed in which the joint has shifted itself or the joints of the of uh, joints of the meta uh, metacarpophalangeal uh, has uh, uh, changed their uh, uh, their alignment their angle towards the lateral side more towards the lateral side this is called the metacarpophalangeal drift these are the metacarpophalangeal joints and metacarpophalangeal joints and the whole uh, you can see the structure has been shifted or deviated or changed their alignment or the uh, angulation towards more towards the lateral side or more towards the ulnar side deviation so this is called the metacarpophalangeal drift which is the hand deformity and commonly occurs in the uh, uh, ra or the rheumatic arthritis okay so hope so uh, ravina it's clear to you now are these special exercises for the ra patient these are the general exercises but uh, are 99% uh, also prescribed for the ra patients as well these are not uh, uh, you can say these are special exercises 99% uh, uh, it's also involved in the ra patients as well what did we say about endurance endurance is a muscular uh, characteristic endurance is a muscle uh, component in which uh, if the person normal or the patient is perform a repeated type of exercise or the repeated type of activity multiple times without fatigue if i'm saying to you that do flexion of the arm 10 times and if you your answer is uh, at the end of the 10 times your answer is that i'm not getting fatigue or my muscles are still uh, like before and i'm not feeling any fatigue or any discomfort that means your endurance is good so muscular uh, property in which your muscle perform various type of exercises 
multiple times without getting fatigue is known as the endurance okay basma how long patient can exercise without fatigue it's not uh, there is no gold standard thing of it or you can say there is not a criteria of it every person uh, has different uh like uh, some uh, who are lean they have different uh, mus muscular endurance and uh, reputation of exercise or those uh, who are uh, uh, obese obese or you can say the healthier or the muscular uh, body so they have different type of so uh, different uh, uh, times of or the reputation so it's not uh, fixed that this is the normal but uh, for the uh, discrimination of the normal or abnormal you have different tests by that you can say that 10 times repetition is the journal or is the uh, the base if the person is able to perform the 10 times with lighter uh, weight so that you can say that the uh, uh, the endurance is good and there are various types of uh, you know special tests are in a physical therapy we have different types of tests that uh, uh, shows their own numbers that if patient perform 20 times that means a good endurance if the patient perform 40 times that excellent endurance so we have specialized type of uh, our own test uh, special test uh, that we can perform to check the endurance so there is uh, not a specific uh, on journal basis we don't have a specific number you can say that uh, on the behalf of that or on the basis of that we say that uh, this is this person has a good endurance or simply if the patient uh, or the person is uh, performing the daily life activities without getting fatigue or without getting alarming discomfort so you can say that patient uh, is having a good amount of endurance okay um what uh, what about the cosmetic aspect considering the rheumatoid nodules and neck or the retinal deformity no cosmetic effects i i have used this word or i i had used this word uh, cosmetic effect means the good alignment uh, the uh, if there is a rheumatoid nodule or the swan neck deformities or the retinal deformity so that means the alignment has been changed and the, the look is so awkward for that uh, you can use uh, some splints or some sling uh, for the cosmetic purpose that show the uh, normal alignment or that uh, give you uh, give you and the patient satisfaction that uh, the hands or the joints are in the normal alignment or it's looking normal because uh, the deviated or the shifted bones or the joints always uh, looks a pretty bad or you can say awkward so that's why i have used this word cosmetic aspect okay when apply the hot pack and cold pack basma a uh, hot pack we apply on the chronic stages mostly and cold packs this is the gold standard rule of applying the hot packs and cold packs and cold packs we apply on the acute stages where the disease is uh, very acute and is in a initial stage is in a beginning stage in the early stage so we use cold packs because inflammation is uh, so uh, obvious and so hurting there So that's why cold can also uh, suppress the uh, inflammation and give the uh, soothing effect and giving the uh, relaxing effect. So that's why we apply only always the cold on the initial stages or in the beginning or in the acute uh, stages and hot pack in the chronic stages. How the patient Saba is asking how the patient can get rid of joint crepitus? Joint crepitus. this uh, this is the thing that is a permanent like uh, the joint destruction is permanent or uh, joint uh, uh, the uh, cartilage destruction or the bony uh, abnormal growth is a permanent one but crepitus or the joint space we can improve or we can uh, increase by the improving the muscle strength if the muscle or the surrounding structure are strong strong enough to bear that uh, problem so that that means the crepitus sounds or the uh, other problems will uh, get reduced but you cannot uh, completely get rid out of it because the bony change is permanent you cannot uh, you cannot reverse that condition 
Zunaira is asking, what management would uh, we uh, would be given to frozen shoulder patient? Frozen shoulder patient is a, a completely different topic than the arthritis. Frozen shoulder is a lay term that capsulitis and other things are uh, happening in that condition. So I'll, inshallah, Zunaira, I'll teach you a frozen shoulder, uh, or you can ask me separately. That would is uh, the management of the frozen shoulder. Initially, the common is again uh, the cold and hot packs and some modalities to reduce the pain. Pain management is same. I told you uh, the pain management in the, uh, in the arthritis. So the pain management is same uh, almost every in every condition. Uh, but you can say that there is a slight different exercises of the frozen shoulder. What is manual therapy? Manual therapy is a domain, is the umbrella term in which we perform uh, different techniques with the different uh, aspects, or you can say with the different uh, angles. Like there are some mulligan techniques, there are some Matlin techniques according to the scientist's name. These techniques we perform with specific direction, with a specific approach. Uh, that is called the manual therapy. Can RA and OA uh, patient perform cardiovascular exercises? Yes, why not? RA and OA patient can perform cardiovascular exercises in the early stages, and if not, then perform the stationary, like the cycling is the stationary exercise, so uh, ask them to perform the stationary exercises. And by that, they can easily uh, get uh, cardiovascular endurance. How patient will uh, uh, do so much training exercise when they simply uh, refrain from the using hip joint? See, that's why I told you that it's uh, depend on you. Uh, I have used that word, that uh, sentence, that it's uh, sometimes depend on you. That if the condition is so worse, then you cannot uh, simply give the vigorous exercises or simple exercises. You always start from the lighter one, like the static exercises. So static exercises can perform by any patient uh, of having severe uh, hip joint involvement or the knee joint involvement so always start from this it's not mandatory that uh, if the patient is uh, is in a critical condition and you ask to perform the severe exercise so it's not mandatory you, it's not uh, you know recommended what are the cardiovascular exercises cardiovascular exercises like jogging running cycling treadmill these are the cardio, these are the uh, exercises that improve the general health, means the muscular power as well as the cardiovascular endurance. Because whenever you perform any physical activity, your cardiovascular system uh, works uh, parallel to it. So you can say the cardiovascular uh, uh, strength or the endurance is also improving. So uh, these are the common example like the jogging, walking, running, uh, brisk walking, um, treadmill walking, cycling. These are the common example of the cardiovascular, physical as well as the cardiovascular exercises. These are not, there are not specific exercises that you can perform, uh, you can say that this exercise has only effect on the cardiovascular and has not on any muscle. So it's not uh, like that, right? So if you perform any physical activity, you, uh, you can say uh, that uh, with the muscle, cardiovascular uh, system is also improving. In which condition? Okay, Aisha, hopefully the answer is clear. Mumina Shahid, no, Aisha, okay, ho gaya. Mumina Shahid, what she is asking, in which condition we prefer cold pack over the hot pack? I, uh, I have already given you the answer that in the uh, acute condition, we prefer to uh, go toward, to the uh, cold pack, and in the chronic condition, uh, in the uh, chronic abnormal condition, we prefer to give the hot packs. Naman Mansoor, Assalamu alaikum. Walaikum Assalam can get the lecture of EPT. I'll ask from your coordinator if she will permit me, then I'll obviously I have no issue uh, to give you the PPT. Otherwise, uh, sorry. 
what is tense trans electrical uh, uh, cutaneous nerve stimulator trans electrical cutaneous nerve stimulator it's a machine it's a, a gadget it's a equipment that we use for the uh, for the management of the pain it works on the pain gate theory uh, hope so that you have heard this uh, term or this word that pain uh, these words pain gate theory pain gate theory is a theory in which uh, if you stimulate or if you uh, can say that if you block the nerve pathways if you block the nerve pathways uh, that are going from the affected part towards the brain so the ultimately uh, the pain sensation will reduce or the patient will not feel any pain so tens uh, is a machine that is work uh, that worked on the pain gate theory and what's the difference between the processes and orthoses processes that we apply externally and orthoses that we implant inside the body <coughs> sorry so this is the difference what's the main book for which we have to cover uh, this rehabilitation module osilvan osilvan is the book osilvan is the book physical rehabilitation the title of the book is the uh, physical rehabilitation in which you will find and the second is the deliza as well uh, in these two books you will find every uh, every topic uh, related to your rehab module so i think that these two books will be enough is cracking of the joint healthy habit no it's not healthy habit if you are uh, intentionally doing this uh, cracking uh, crackling or the cracking of the sound or you know just pressing the uh, joints uh, together it's not a healthy habit because your cartilage is going to uh, damage in it so it's not a healthy habit thank you miss you always welcome but it's too outdated delay the sixth edition is it's too outdated uh, but these are the authentic books uh the delisa and uh, the susan these are the authentic books like you can say surgery and medicine books they are uh, also very old one uh, but they are uh, obviously they are authentic like uh, your physiology books are so old gaitan is so old but these are the authentic books so i'll uh, recommend you these two is second class started your second class will be at 12 okay so i have cleared all the questions as well as uh, my topic so hope so there uh, there has no any query or any problem related to this topic i have tried to clear all the aspect of this topic or related to this topic but still if you find any problem during uh, listening the lecture or during uh, reading the book if any uh, a statement or any sentence or any line that you feel feel that it's uh, difficult to understand you can ask me any time okay class allah hafiz